question is if they can keep those additional public health measures in place, they might be able to keep cases to a lower level and not see this dramatic spike that we're seeing in Europe. We've learned to live with SARS-CoV-2 variants, but the newest has everybody worried. Omicron was first detected by scientists in South Africa, and now the world has reacted with travel bans and stricter quarantine measures. This is not a surprise. If anything, it's a surprise that we haven't had a new variant that's really sort of taken over and sort of surpassed Delta already, because the virus is constantly changing. For several months, Delta has been the dominant variant, and scientists have watched with concern as vaccine rates slowed and masks were set aside. Virologist Dr Jeremy Rossman shares their concerns. He's been a reliable contributor on Razor throughout the pandemic. Because of the success of vaccines, do you think people thought, well, the pandemic is over? We know that this is not over. We knew that this was always a risk and was going to happen, and it will happen again. And this is why it's so important that we have measures in place to prevent the spread of new variants, to prevent the transmission of the variants that we currently have. Vaccines are an incredibly good layer of prevention, but layers work best together. Scientists are concerned because Omicron has more than 30 mutations of the spike protein in the receptor building domain, more than double that of Delta. The virus uses the spike protein to attach to human cells and what vaccines teach our immune system to recognise and target. There's so much we don't know about Omicron, but do we have any idea if the vaccines will provide protection? The chances of that sort of worst case scenario, I think, are incredibly small. But for, for argument's sake, let's just say this variant was completely evading. And if that was the case, then, you know, first of all, we still know what to do to prevent virus transmission. We have a lot of other mitigation layers, and yet we will need stricter adherence to them. We will need more of these layers in place. It will be a little bit more difficult, but we still have measures that we can use to prevent transmission. And of course, the beauty of the mRNA vaccines is that they can be re-engineered and remanufactured relatively quickly in contrast to other vaccines. So we would likely have a vaccine against this variant, but unfortunately that would probably take a couple months. We'd be probably talking with a little bit of sort of clinical trials and some remanufacturing. It could be up to six months until we would have that available to be used um, in many countries. And so we would still need those preventative measures. Before the emergence of Omicron, the focus was on Japan, where cases had dramatically fallen after an August peak. There was a theory that Delta may have been self-destructing after several mutations left it unable to make copies of itself, although not all scientists are in agreement. First of all, it's very hard to pinpoint any specific cause when we're seeing this, you know, declining cases. We had the same thing in the UK um, many months ago where we saw declining cases. And there's a lot of plausible explanations that people can come up with, but it's very difficult to pinpoint the specific reason. Um, I know that it's been you know, postulated that the virus has mutated and that's why it hasn't been spreading. But I think it's much more likely that we saw a very steep rise in cases following the Olympics and that after that, the impact of vaccination and masks and other public health precautions helped drive the cases down. Dr. Rossman says viruses mutate all the time, but not in a way that drives it to extinction. So the virus is constantly mutating. Anytime it infects a person, it changes a little bit. And most of those changes really have no effect. They're not advantageous for the virus, but they're also not disadvantageous for the virus. But sometimes those changes can be, as in this case, mutations in the protein that sort of proof checks the genetic sequence of the virus to make sure that there are no changes in it. And so if you have sort of errors in the error checking mechanism, 
then of course you're getting a lot more changes in the virus and the chances of the virus having mutations that makes basically the virus not function anymore are much higher. And this happens all the time in viruses, in virus evolution. But normally those strains then die out because of course they don't spread as well. They don't grow as well. So it's unlikely that if you have some of those mutations, but you also have the normal Delta variant spreading around, it's not going to outcompete Delta variant because it's effectively less fit. So it may have occurred but it's very unlikely that that's going to dominate what's happening in terms of transmission in Japan and then cause a die out of transmission. So I, that could be occurring, but I don't think that's why we saw cases going down in Japan. The virus's error correcting enzyme called NSP14 sounds like an obvious target for new medical treatments. Unfortunately, developing those therapeutics is not easy. So we've known that the coronaviruses, basically all of the coronaviruses, are very good at error checking. Most RNA viruses are not very good at error checking, like the flu, which is also an RNA virus, very bad at error checking. So it changes really quickly. And so it's been thought that if you actually have a drug that targets this error checking mechanism, the virus might mutate faster and the virus would sort of die out. And that's a possibility. But unfortunately, you also have the other possibility, which is that if you don't have error checking, the virus might evolve much faster and we might get more transmissible and more dangerous variants that much quicker, sort of like we see with flu. Because just because flu has less error checking, it doesn't mean it's any less dangerous of a virus. So it could actually produce a reverse effect and put the accelerator down rather than putting the brakes on. Exactly. So I, I think any drug that targets the error checking mechanism, it does have some potential, but we would have to approach that with real caution because it could have the exact opposite effect. And with the arrival of winter in the Northern Hemisphere and the new Omicron variant, Dr. Rossman believes Japan will see another rise in cases. Even countries that have extraordinarily good um, vaccine coverage are now seeing virus transmission. They're seeing spiking cases because that sort of reliance on vaccines is not sufficient with the Delta variant. So Japan is in a better position because they have better mass usage, because they have some better communication. But this is still looking at the winter, looking at Delta variant and seeing what's happening in many other countries, like many countries in Europe. I think it's very likely that they will see increasing cases. The question is if they can keep those additional public health measures in place, they might be able to keep cases to a lower level and not see this dramatic spike that we're seeing in Europe. If worst fears are realized and Omicron triggers even bigger waves of infection around the world than previous variants, all layers of protection will be needed. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.